Hello and welcome to Puzzle Pieces. In each episode we try to take a look at a different type of puzzle and at the moment we're playing through a game called Paradox of the Cryptomancers which was a puzzle game that came out last year and each level of the game is based around a different sort of puzzle. So we've just arrived at level 7 and stepped out of the lift and you can see there's not a, not a whole lot to see to start with. We're in a long corridor We've got a terminal console here that requires some sort of input and we've got a single phrase written above the door here, not all who wander are lost. And you'll notice that lost has a capital L there. Now um, I never saw the TV show Lost but I was aware at least that it had you know a, a sort of a law and a number of kind of hidden secret messages and things as part of the narrative. So with a little bit of googling I was able to find out that there was a sequence of numbers that was important in the narrative of that show. And those are 4, 8, 15, 16, 23 and 42. So if we enter those into the terminal here, it takes a surprising amount of time to check um, just whether six numbers were correct. Um, but if we wait for a moment while that, that gets checked, well, so it's authenticated and the door has opened so we can get through into the next area. Now um, puzzles like that that require outside knowledge are kind of frowned upon in escape rooms and in many other sort of puzzle games as well but I guess it's okay in a computer game where you know you're going to have an internet connection anyway to rely on it. It's a slightly lazy puzzle but um, you know it's okay just as a, as a starter puzzle. So in this area we've got um, some sort of props here, nothing else we can interact with other than these two console terminals at the end. Uh, now this one, as before, expects some kind of uh, password input into it or something like that. The one on the left is a bit different though, if you try to interact with that you just get the message, I'm listening. Now this took me a, a sort of a little while to, to figure out what to do with this one, but the use of that terminology sounded um, you know, slightly odd and quite particular, I'm listening. And on a kind of a computer terminal, the only context I could think of in which something could be listening was like a server waiting for incoming connections from clients or something like that. Um, and I wondered if that's what was going on here. So um, I fired up a command prompt window, uh, which I've got over here, and then uh, ran the netstat command uh, with the AB extension. So what that's going to do is that's going to produce a list of all the services running on my local machine that are um, got ports open and listening for connections. And you can see that we've got this uh, phrase listening for all of the services that are running. So um, taking a look down here I kind of wonder boy is there something here that we can pull out that might be relevant to the game. Um, and you can see I've got a whole lot of lot of lot of stuff here running actually, so it takes a little bit of time to see if there's anything relevant at all. Nothing obviously jumps out. Um, so I'm wondering actually if that's worked or not, because I was expecting to find something in this list. Let me come back here for a moment, and we'll just definitely check. Yeah, so I have clicked on that console. Definitely says I'm listening. So as has been the case a couple of times while playing through this game, what is kind of a neat idea has been slightly um, had a poor implementation. So I've had to click that console in the background about five times and eventually um, I've noticed that I have got this entry which is what I was expecting to find the first time. So you'll see that it started a, a service here that's listening on port 9999 of the local IP address and that's being run by the game itself. So I thought, okay, well the next thing to try is let's see if we can make a connection to that um, port there. So I fired up uh, Putty next. And so here's my Putty window. And we'll connect to uh, the local machine, port 9999, and we'll make a raw connection there. And we get as far as a command prompt. Okay, so let's uh, list and see what we've got. We've got two folders on this server, personal and work. Um, we'll start off, we'll take a look in work to start with and do a directory listing there. So we've got uh, secure files, to do, unlock. Let's 
take a look at the to-do list to start with. Um, not much there of any obvious use, so we can possibly ignore that. But there is a file called unlock door. So if we call unlock door and now come back to the game, we see that the door has opened. So that's kind of neat. Um, using a, a, another program, using Putty, we've remotely connected into a server that the game is running in the background and called a file which has made a difference to the in-game state of the world. And in here we've got a, um, a little bit of manuscript with a code on it. So my first thought, having discovered this, was to take this code uh, back and enter that as the password in this machine here. But if you do that, you'll find that that doesn't actually work. There's a couple more layers to the puzzle to solve first. So uh, what we need to do is actually go back into Putty again. Uh, not that one, That's uh, which is in here. And if we come back out of the work folder again and back into personal, we'll notice that the personal folder requires a password. So perhaps we could try using the password from the memo we just discovered in the game. And when we do that, we find it uh, actually lets us in. So this is quite clever. We needed to uh, connect to the server first of all to run a program that opened the door in the game and then using a piece of paper we found in the game we use the password to then unlock a, a new bit on the server um, and when we take a look in uh, this folder sorry we'll find that it's got a number of uh, journal entries in it so if we take a look at actually reading some of those journals um, we can just find out a bit more backstory about what's been going on here um, so yada 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 things are obviously getting pretty bad discovered the computer today uh, perhaps this will be a healthy diversion one day I'll write a book about this um, nothing particularly to go on here but in the final entry we see been underground for 17 days the silence is torture I won't live until I get the world I long to see Julia again okay so we don't know who Julia is but um, it's obviously important to the person writing the memo and um, as we know everyone who sets secure passwords um, often uses the names of important people so if we go back into the work directory again remember that there is this secure files directory and if we try to get into that we'll find that we need a password for that as well so perhaps this Julia person whoever it was might be the password to that folder Sure enough, that lets us in, and when we list the contents of that directory, we have a single file called secret, which when we take a look at that, we'll find we have a new code here, and it's actually this code that we now need to enter into the terminal in the game. So if we come here and enter this check that and we'll find that that has been authenticated congratulations floor 8 is now unlocked so um, like I said in, in several levels of this game so far it's quite a clever puzzle um, I like the fact that you're kind of breaking the fourth wall you come out of the game uh, to load you know first command prompt to see that the server's running and then putty to connect to that server and there's sort of that two way interface there because we both had to um, run a file on the server that made a modification in the game and then we had to find information in the game that held us um, that helped us to proceed through the directory listing at the server um, so that's quite clever um, it's just the the implementation itself is a bit ropey and if that server doesn't actually fire up the first time this puzzle basically becomes impossible and unless you knew that that was what you had to do as I did in this case I kind of reloaded a few times until it fired up correctly um, that would be incredibly frustrating but never mind we move onwards and upwards um, so I will catch you in the next episode where we will face floor 8 but thanks very much for watching